this lecture i'm going to discuss the reactivity series of metals and i'm going to specifically talk about the displacement reactions of metals now i've written down the reactivity series in front of you starting from the most reactive to the least reactive so you have k n a group 1 uh group 1 uh metals are one of the most reactive ones so they are at the top of the reactivity series they're the most reactive ones then you have group 2 they become less reactive then group 3 and then you have all these transition metals uh so the reactivity decreases uh so silver gold uh platinum mercury etc are very very unreactive now uh what do i mean by displacement reactions uh the rule for a displacement reaction is that a more reactive metal so if you have a more reactive metal it would displace a less reactive metal from its compounds so for example if i have um, if i have um, zinc and i react it with copper sulfate which is in aqueous state and zinc is a metal so that's a solid now if you look at the reactivity series you're going to see that zinc is right um, zinc is over here and copper is over here so copper is a lot less reactive compared to zinc so if you have zinc reacting with copper sulfate what would happen is that zinc would displace copper because zinc is more reactive and zinc would form it's going to take away all the so4 the sulfate ion and it's going to it's going to bond with it so zinc would take away so4 from copper and copper would be left alone because copper is less reactive compared to zinc let's do another reaction for example i have sodium and i'm reacting it with mgcl2 magnesium chloride and magnesium chloride is in aqueous state and sodium is a metal so that's a solid and if i do this reaction what would happen is that sodium mgcl2 is the formula for uh, magnesium chloride so sodium is going to displace magnesium because sodium is a lot reactive compared to magnesium which appears lower down in the reactivity series so you have what would form eventually is going to be sodium chloride and mg would be left alone the reason why the formula is going to be nacl is that uh, na is plus 1 and cl is minus 1 so the formula would come out to be nacl over here it's mgcl2 because mg is 2 plus and cl is minus 1 so i need to the last thing i need to do is i need to balance the equation so there are two chlorines on the left hand side so there should be two chlorines on the right hand side as well and since there are two sodium on the right hand side this is supposed to be two sodiums on the left hand side as well so this is the basic idea of uh, displacement reaction the more reactive metal is going to displace the less reactive metal now as you can see that if you look at the reactivity series there are a couple of uh, non metals over there as well there is carbon and there is uh, hydrogen over there as well so so we can bring them into play as well what we can do is what we can do is that if we react carbon with let's say iron oxide fe2o3 what would happen is that carbon is more reactive carbon is over here it's over here where as iron is over here so iron is less reactive compared to carbon now carbon is going to take away all the oxygens from fe2o3 so what would happen is that carbon when it takes away all the oxygen it ends up forming carbon dioxide and fe would be left alone because it's the unreactive it's it's less reactive compared to carbon so carbon takes away all its oxygens and you need to balance this so there would be two fe2o3s and there would be therefore there would be three co2s and there would be three carbons and there would be four ions now this equation is balanced we can we can do the same with hydrogen as well now hydrogen is very low in the reactivity series so if you have hydrogen gas uh, uh, what i can think of is this is hydrogen over here and this over here is copper so hydrogen is more reactive than copper so copper usually forms a uh, copper oxide now copper oxide uh, is a compound and hydrogen because being more reactive would take away all the oxygens and if hydrogen takes away all oxygens hydrogen would end up forming h2o because hydrogen and oxygen end up forming h2o which is water so copper would be 
left alone and copper would be displaced. So, so these are some of the displacement reactions. A more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal. Another way to look at this is that a more reactive metal, so if you have a more reactive metal, a reactive metal has a higher tendency to lose electrons. So, so it has a greater tendency to lose electrons. So they're going to try and lose as many electrons as possible. So a more reactive metal would end up reducing a less reactive metal ion when we're talking about metal ions so so these metal ions would end up gaining electrons so they're going to gain electrons if they are in the company of a more reactive metal so we can we can do an example so let's say i have uh, magnesium metal and i have copper ions in solution in aqueous solution or or if it's even forming a compound so one way to look at what we've discussed previously is that if I, am, if I keep magnesium with copper ions, what is going to happen is that magnesium is, has a very high tendency, it's more reactive, so it has a high tendency to lose electrons. Whereas copper ions are less reactive, so they would therefore be in, would end up gaining electrons because some, the electrons being lost by magnesium, they need to end up somewhere. So magnesium, the electrons being lost by magnesium would end up with copper ions. So copper is going to... Uh, form Cu, it's going to become neutral, it's going to become a metal again because it would end up gaining those electrons and magnesium because it's, it has a higher tendency to lose electrons, it would end up forming magnesium ions. So another way to look at this entire uh, uh, situation is that a more reactive metal would always reduce the ions of a less reactive metal. And uh, since it's losing electrons, it's getting oxidized, so it's a very good reducing agent a more reactive metal would always be a better reducing agent and copper ions are gaining electrons so they are being reduced so they are oxidizing agents in this equation let's do another example let's take uh, sodium and let's put it next to calcium ions now calcium ions are or calcium is less reactive than sodium so sodium would have a higher tendency to lose electrons and when it loses those electrons then calcium ions would end up gaining those electrons so the product would contain sodium ions because sodium is going to lose those electrons and calcium ions would end up gaining and picking those electrons so calcium would become neutral so uh, the only thing uh, that you need to take care is that if you look at sodium then sodium is losing just one electron so sodium just lost it just lost one electron but if you look at look at calcium ions calcium ions are going from two plus to neutral so they're basically gaining the gaining two electrons now the number of electrons lost by sodium are the, are the electrons that are being gained by calcium. So they must be equal. So to make them equal, you need to have two sodiums because two sodiums together are going to lose two electrons. So each sodium loses uh, one electron. So two sodiums are going to lose two electrons. And then calcium ions are going to pick those electrons. They're going to end up gaining those electrons. So they would end up becoming neutral. So you need to make sure that the number of electrons being lost and the number of electrons being gained are equal. Here is one example question that you might get in your exams. Uh, so you get a lot of tables uh, related to this to these displacement reactions. So, so let's look at the first one. You have uh, copper metal reacting with uh, and you're putting it in copper sulfate. Now in this case because copper is not going to displace copper and even if it does it's going to make the same thing. So, so this reaction is completely irrelevant. So, uh, let's for, uh, let's ignore that reaction. Let's come to this second uh, column where iron is reacting with copper sulfate. So, if you look at iron, iron is more reactive than copper sulfate. So, the product that you're going to get is going to be FeSO4, and it is going to be a displacement reaction. Similarly, zinc is more reactive. If you look at the reactivity series, zinc is over here, whereas copper is uh, somewhere over here. So zinc is more reactive. So in this case, there's going to be a displacement reaction. Zinc would displace copper sulfate. So you're going to get zinc sulfate. And similarly, you have magnesium, which is the most reactive one. 
So magnesium would also displace copper from copper sulfate and you're going to end up with Mg SO4. So in three of the three of the columns the reaction would occur. Let's move to the second row. You have copper with iron sulfate. Now there is not going to be a reaction because copper is less reactive compared to FeSO4. So copper will not will, will not be displacing uh, iron from its salt. Then you have iron uh, with iron sulfate. This is an irrelevant reaction. Uh, you have zinc with iron sulfate. If you look at zinc, zinc is more reactive than iron. So so again, zinc sulfate would be formed in this case and it would displace iron. And then you have magnesium, which is also more reactive than uh, FeSO4. So again, you're going to get MgSO4 and iron in uh, iron sulfate is going to be displaced. Now let's move to the third uh, row. You have copper with zinc sulfate. Again, no reaction because copper is less reactive. Then you have iron with zinc sulfate. Now iron is less reactive compared to zinc sulfate. So iron will not displace zinc. Displace zinc. Then you have zinc with zinc sulfate. That's an irrelevant reaction. And then you have magnesium with zinc sulfate. Magnesium is over here and zinc is over here. So magnesium is more reactive. So magnesium would display, displace zinc. And you're going to get magnesium sulfate. And in the last step, you have copper with magnesium sulfate. This would not occur because copper is less reactive. Iron with magnesium sulfate, that's also iron is less reactive. So it won't do anything to magnesium sulfate. You have zinc with zinc sulfate. With magnesium sulfate, again, zinc is less reactive. So again, no reaction over here. And then you have magnesium with magnesium sulfate. And this is an irrelevant reaction. So in only one, two, three, four, five, uh, you have uh, in six ca cases, there is a displacement reaction occurring. Otherwise, there's no displacement reaction. So if a metal is more reactive, a displacement reaction would occur.